Ah, hello! Welcome to Jankanu! Ah, it's been a week, isn't it? It seems like a long time again. We also did Tuesday just for you. And now today's Sunday. I'm hoping you get to enjoy this. But all I can ask you, which my brother forgets to ask you, is to tell other people about the program. It's all for you and the environment and the future and your children and your children's children, right? So anyway, my brother has asked me to tell you what we're doing in the program. I'm not going to tell you anything. All I know is there's everything as usual. There is conversation that you can interact with him. There is also how to do this, how to do that, how to make a mask, how to make a, you know, anything you want to make, we're going to be showing on this program. And also there's the usual thing as well, where we show you the different things like Janganu, the African masquerade and different things like that. So I'm not going to tell you anything. It's up to him to tell you anything. Now, brother, you tell them what they need to know. That's how we make music in the jungle. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We got so much for you today. And I also had my brother and... Uh, I notice who is in the house at the moment, Angela, you get another gold award today. And I know Nadia as well, but I can't see on the messages. Uh, so Angela and Nadia, you are there. Where are you, Cheryl? Where are you, Francisco? Who are those early comers? Where are you? Huh? Jane Blackburn, where are you? Oh, la la. Okay, okay. I got the message. You are there. I got the message, madam. I got the message. You are there. And... Ah, Nadia is there as well. Ooh la la. So that's very good. So I'm just going to kick off now with the horns of plenty. Horns of plenty. Uh, you check all about them because eh? I think my brother is going to go on and on about it. Whatever he's going to say, I don't know. <laughs> back again i hope this brethren of mine is behaving himself here i'm enjoying myself here i'm dancing to the music made by the bees and birds why you ask me i don't know anyway my brother got involved with a carnival in oxford called cowley road carnival and uh, he thought he was going to do all these things in the street <laughs> it's COVID time. Everything was done virtually. Then he sort of, you know, encouraged people to do these uh, house floors, which happened, and then also encouraged local people to do street parties. That happened as well. But the most crucial thing is he programmed some very exciting bands. There's so many of them, and I would like to show every week, I would like these bands to be shown. Do you hear that? Right? So this time around, it's a band that's so brilliant. They make me laugh. They are called Horns of Plenty. Okay, I'll come back to the horns of plenty. I just want to welcome all these wonderful people who are here. Oh, Donna, 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 Madam Ika. What is MCAM? I keep calling ECAM because the system that we use here is called ECAM. So I always, <laughs> whenever people talk about MCAM, I always talk about ECAM. But ECAM is the system that we use for live streaming. So next time when you see me making those mistakes, that's what it is, really. And then who are the other people in the house? Oh la la, Helen, hooray, how are you? Hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah, uh, Helen, next week we are going to show the adventure we had uh, with Coco P, okay? And we've already started editing it. Uh, that's going to be look very exciting indeed. Oh la la! Did you hear Jankanu somewhere? Did you hear Jankanu somewhere? No, he didn't hear any Jankanu. There's no Jankanu today, madam. Morning from the Bahamas. Now, 
the thing is angelic sometimes she's like 4 p.m she says to me good morning i'm like hey what good morning when where how 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 but what it is the bahamas are behind us so i'm impressed that she's i think she's just got out of bed now right 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 angelic and guess what i'm going to call you today i'm going to call you the right word right you are the jankanu ambassador okay no argument about it that's your job Janganu ambassador you represent you also the global carnivores ambassador if you remember that so you got two ambassador jobs so don't you start going on about the goddess and all that no 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 you don't need that hey who else is there uh, what don't i saying don't i saying good morning or afternoon whatever which is what i was saying really the bahamas you know uh and uh, donna and a few people from the east midlands uh for your own information they did travel to the bahamas they did see this crazy uh, uh jankanu goddess did i say goddess what's wrong with me i shouldn't do that anyway we're going to go into the program now what you're seeing there's horns of plenty they're playing one of the tunes from africa which i love very much which i grew up with and then from now we're going to look into trash instruments right there is people who take instruments trash and guess what i also did a trash thing my tap was dripping and then i came in and then i added the pan then I added shaker, then I added drum. So you're going to see that, but that was influenced by this trash instrument that's going to come after the horns of plenty. And then we're going to do how to make your face covering. We're going to do, and Angelic, are you going to be so happy, my friend, when I start showing you how they do Jankanu in America? I'm going to show you that. And it upset me because they were using lorries. But you, it may not upset you because you are an ambassador. Somebody's doing your ambassador job. Then we're going to have Genesis doing their drumming thing, Call of the Wild. You would love that. You would love that. And then we're also going to have the usual information about the planet. They're reminding you that the planet is dying. So we're going to have that. And we're going to have a, a giant cultural dance, right? That goes on. It was in the Guinness Book of Records. Then we're also going to have a make how to make a giant egg. Uh, just using paper mache. Um, then we're also going to go. There's a lady in India who's telling us how to do zero waste travel kit. A zero waste travel kit. And then also going to go to the to uh, Alicia Jagasa at Curry Festa singing something. Then I'm also going to go to the Independence Day in the Janganu. Then you see all the different acts because last time I did show some soccer artists and so on. So I'll be showing that. So there's a lot of stuff. So we're going back to the ones of Jericho. Then we go to the trash instrument and so on and so on and so on. So enjoy the show and welcome again and okay so the lady <laughs> donna what are you laughing at <laughs> uh, Jangan, what are you say the Janganu is in the building yay what goddess oh no nadia nadia money 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 is happening here money is happening Janganu goddess we charge you for that bahamas the best what do you call it? You, what do you say again? To remind me what you say because they say that in Trinidad and everywhere. The wildest. Oh, I can't remember what you say. Yeah. Hi there. Angelic is saying hi to everybody. So we continue with this. So gone horns of plenty. Then we're going to this trash business and then all the other business. business. Uh, you're going to find it very exciting when you do the 3D printing. You can do 3D printing. Helen, did you know that? You could do all your designs on 3D printing. And we shall show you there. Horns of plenty so love the sound of baritone sax. Now listen to that lady. Yeah, she plays trombone. So anything with the horns, that is that is paradise for her. So I better get this paradise going right now. Okay, and before she fires me. Pata pata, 
aye pata pata nga mama yama iya mama yama yama iya mama yama Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is where Miriam Makeba starts saying something. How wonderful music is in Africa and all the places. And how wonderful the ones of plenty are. I love their music. So now we're going to go to this trash instrument that I was talking about. And after this, I'm also, Angelic, you need to listen to this. I'm also going to show Rack and Scrap people's performing on stage just a small little clip then after that when i show the independence band independence in bahamas the performers you find the performer there's one performer where they were singing the song called uh rock and scrap and the performer with the hacksaw so is everywhere is like that all the anyway you're going to see that so now we're moving into this trash business to, so that i can show you what i ended up doing after being inspired by that <laughs> You can find magic just right around you, wherever you are right now. I'm interested in the sculptural, ergonomic quality that instruments have. What I'm doing is transforming your perception about our relationship to objects that we take for granted. I'm using something that somebody already destroyed. If you have a broom or a shovel or a hairbrush, violin, you know, the fact that you can play anything on it. Wow! It's fantastic! It's two hockey sticks stuck together side by side, tennis racket. That's a golf club with one string, surfboard base surfboard guitar. Well, that would be the song, right? Surfboard cello. In New York, tall buildings, you just end up with amazing piles of stuff on the street. You know, I once carried a mannequin back on the subway, you know, a naked, naked female on the subway. <laughs> the immediate juxtaposition of existing objects put together in a strange way allows some crazy things to happen that you probably couldn't imagine if you sat down with a pencil and paper. The chair you're sitting in, if you took it apart with a screwdriver and got a drill, you could make it into a stringed instrument in an hour. You could be playing it. <laughs> Um, Madam Angelic, yes, 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 yes. I got, I got, I got where you. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Jankan uh, is the greatest show on earth. Nadia is writing down. That's another five pounds. I don't know how much it is now, but it's it is piling up, isn't it? Now, I'm going to show you how people do Jankanu outside the USA. Madam Angelic, I'm not going to make any comments. I've made my comments earlier, so I won't make any comments. But I want to know, you tell me what you think, right? Before I go into the real thing. So this is the Jankanu in somewhere in the States, right? Somewhere in the States, I don't know, but somewhere in the States. <laughs> Yeah, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me what you think. Is that, is that what you think? That's what you think, madam, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the greatest show on earth. I wasn't happy because they are using that big, uh, maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe that big truck is for something else. Yes? Uh, if it was for the for them, then I'm not happy. But if it was for something else, I'm very happy that you know Jankanu is being represented in the states, right? Patent? 
I can't work out whether those people have just come from the Bahamas or these people are local people who are doing the Jangkanu. And some of them don't have the movement. Ah, I see they are dressed for carnival, not Jankanu. No, the dress for Jankanu, they called it Jankanu. What are you talking about? They said it's Jankanu, that's why I brought it here. They said, check this Jankanu in the States. And I'm like, okay, I'll check it out then. Uh, and then uh, Donna Fox, I still need to see the Jankanu. Jankanu in your region. The Jankanus are n next to the trucks, see the drums. That's what I'm talking about. That's the people I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the others. I'm talking about them. With their drums, they got all the drums and everything. If you can see, they are carrying the drums, right? And that that is Jankanu. Come on. That is proper Jankanu. Uh, the kind of people I think are the ones on the track. But these here are supposed to be Jankanu. Don't you think? Somebody sent me this thing. I don't have much information about it, but actually, I'm going to forgive them. This is all. You see, all this year with the drum, they are one group, right? They got the right drums for Jankanu. Come on, what are you saying there? What are you saying? The guys with the instrument, they own Jankanu costume. The others are dressed for carnival. That's exactly what I'm saying, madam. I'm talking about those who are dressed in the Jankanu costumes. That's the ones I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to move on now. We are going to move to Jankanu. What are you saying? What are you saying? Yes, there are Jankanus. They want to start playing. Exactly. It's only the only problem I had is I'd mistaken. I thought they are using the big truck for the sound. And I'm like, ah, oh, no. Ah, oh, I like to hear. What is it? What does she call the Jankanu goddess? I like to hear the Jankanu goddess actually saying I'm correct. Because I'm never correct. Everybody knows that. So it's good to know that I'm correct. Oh la la, who else is in the house? Madam Tola, hooray. I think, he, were you there last week? I can't remember, but we showed your interview and uh, people loved it. So now we are going to move. We are going to move to... Where are we moving? Because uh, Oh, I want to show you how I... <laughs> the Jankanu commanders often travel to Caribbean carnivals in the States to perform. I definitely thought those people were not from the States. I thought they were from the from the Bahamas. Right. So now... So that's the tap. Dripping. Greetings! You know, when my tap started going funny, I decided... That's some music. There is some music there. So I recorded the tap. Then after that, I got the pan, which is on my left there. And then I recorded going along with it. Then after that, I got a drum. Then I recorded with it. Then I got a shaker. Then I recorded with it. Now I want to show you the last part of it, which is this drum here. That's how I'm going to conclude. So we have the music playing from the tap and all these other instruments then i join in as well okay so let's see what happens here so we start from the beginning the tap and then everything joins it there you go yeah tap going tap 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 tap
Now that's how we make tap music, right? That's tap music. Right, so that was tap music. Uh, so anything breaks in your house, you can make some music with it. Anything you can make music with it. Now, I've noticed that most of you who are there are either designers or people who work with designers. There was a conversation between some uh, designers, creative designers. So I would like you, I'm sure, I'm quite convinced that you are going to get something out of that. So I'm going to play, yeah, I'm going to play this conversation that these creative designers had and I'm 100% sure you're going to find it very interesting. So these are the designers having a chat. Hi, welcome everyone. So we're here because we're a bunch of uh, creative designers that are doing sustainable or upcycled or recycled types of stuff. And the mission of this group is, and we're going to rewrite this as soon as some volunteer with uh, writing skills jumps in to do it, <laughs> is to support indie designers that are working inside sustainable and upcycled parameters to make commercially viable garments. So we're, our support for each other includes everything we can think of from cross promotion to education, to collaboration, emotional support, goal setting, accountability, sharing information, sharing opportunities, friendship, you know, anything that we can do to kind of push each other and, and this idea of, of rethinking the fashion to design industry into more sustainable ways, anything we can do inside that, that's our mission. So I wanna just invite you all to introduce yourselves um, really briefly before we talk about our projects and what we're gonna do. Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, my name is Lauren Bacall Snowden. I just go by Lauren because Lauren Bacall is too much to say. Um, I, I'm not really sure what to call myself. Maybe I'm a hobbyist, maybe I'm a designer. I don't really know yet. Um, I do like to sew. I started off sewing um, for my daughters because I didn't like that all of the shorts um, that were available to them in the summer, I felt were too short and their little chickens were hanging out the bottom of the shorts. So um, I got a pair of boys shorts from a thrift store and cut them and then sewed on this little like lace stuff and made them all girly and pretty. And it just like took off from there. I'll, I'll go next. I'm Ann Willis. I... Uh, and uh, I have a degree in clothing design and construction that I used years ago doing pattern making and technical work. But then I stepped out um, as we were moving, we moved to, a, to Olympia, Washington that doesn't have a uh, clothing industry. So I stayed home with my kids, but I've always kept sewing. And now my interest is trying to upcycle. My name is Sherry Noble. I have a business called Maison La Macon. And I work a lot with leather. It's not primarily leather, but a lot of my collection is um, leather based. And uh, this project uh, interested me because um, I do get feedback about using leather and I'd like to kind of make up for some of my sins. Hi, I'm Sachi. Uh, I'm still figuring out my way into like what as a designer I want to do, but it is uh, very much into the recycle industry that I'm leaning towards. I did, I, ha I do have a fashion degree from New York Fashion Designing, and uh, I was working as a fashion stylist uh, at Armoire till 2019. Uh, while working there, uh, we, when the, it's a rental fashion business, and whenever they were like, uh, something worns out or there's a button falls off we used to sit and like repurpose it or like make the design go in a different way because all those were like branded clothes uh we didn't want to let go of it so when we started doing when i was involved in that i kind of enjoyed the process and i thought about hey why there is so many clothes around that we can turn it to something beautiful and make use of it then i started a youtube channel where i do try to make such things and show people how to, re uh, in a very small way, how they can fix their clothes or how you can make something out of it. I do model to a bit modeling. So that is another side of my passion where I try to uh, try all the parts of the design aspect or the fashion field. So I want to not stick into one field. So. <laughs> so I am Gleniva and uh, my brand is Yannick Designs. And I, 
I think I only know Lauren because we've been in um, some some shows together. Um, so I am a self-taught fashion designer. Um, I don't have a clothing degree or a fashion degree, but I've been sewing. My mom is a seamstress, so she I learned from her. Um, she doesn't use patterns, she freestyle. And that's kind of the same thing that I have gotten into where I either make my own patterns or I just freestyle cut. What I love to use is unconventional fabric. Uh, my favorite fabric to use are upholstery fabric uh, to make um, garments. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Um, my name is Elena Haas and um, I'm gonna go by Elena Karen. Um, and my, I'm not, trained at all. I, um, when my kids were growing up, I kind of got tired of the costumes, started doing that. And then I kind of discovered period work and pulled out, like I found old 1700s tailoring books. And I found that fascinating to figure out how they measured and go have that done. And so I just kind of, I'm more someone who pulls up something and like figures it out or stares at a garment and goes, okay. And then my brain's always designing for people. So um, my background is film and theater, and I've been a film producer for quite a while, but been taking a break, especially during COVID. But um, I'm really interested in like adaptive garments and just all the things that kind of get missed. I just am always kind of intrigued by those fashionaries who are getting missed or, or the myth of like size determining whether or not we can look good in something. So yeah. I don't know, I saw this and thought it would be a great chance and I could run things by you guys because cool. I think the final details I really like, you know, don't get sometimes so yeah so I'm looking totally I just want to say I also have yeah. a background in in film and video I saw that on uh, your um Facebook profile and I was like yeah. oh yeah we're gonna bond <laughs> yeah I think we have mutual friends I was like oh hey uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah cool my name is Maria Venturini and everything that I do is recycling I was like, it's a uh, is it has some recycled material some of them some of them is the whole thing is recycled material you know, and I love that. And I love uh, that from something you can create something else. And if you see here, I have this that I made from two pillowcases and a bed skirt. So, and I went to a Goodwill Designer Challenge and I won in 2016. Hello, my name is Mercedes Atkins. I'm a new designer. I've been... I learned sewing our traditional regalia and outfits, and I just wanted to branch off more. I've been following different designers and just thought I would like to make more garments. And I noticed a lot of people, new designers are out there and they honor indigenous people, Native American people, but I also would like to start moving into incorporating more indigenous native designs and getting I just recently started making bags and coats is what I want to specialize in. Just quickly to introduce myself, I'm Stacy. I'm a student designer, really. I go to Seattle Fashion Academy, but it got shut down during COVID. Um, but I have a background uh, in film and video, so I'm very you know, business oriented and, and been out there doing shows and I have a little pop-up shop I started last summer. So I'm, I'm very excited about the business side of things too. And I'm very excited about networking. And right now my creative juju is all about us coming together. Like this is really where the creative juice is for me. Yes, I think it's very interesting, uh, especially for new designers and so on. And I've had a few students joining us uh, after when we, we finish broadcasting. I do still have a lot of people coming to me and uh, making comments and actually enjoying the program. So I had a lot of students, uh, many students really, a uh, fashion students who come and want more information and to be inspired by people like that. So now we, every time I show something from the Bahamas, because in, in, in Africa, our main link there is Nobles number one. In Ghana, they are Ghana like number one. Uh, what do you call it? One of those vintage uh, legendary who actually one of the pioneers and so on. And there's other groups there. But the one I deal with there is Nobles number one. In the Bahamas, of course, Janganu Commandos is the link. But whenever I play or when I show something, I'm always showing roots and the valley boys why there's a lot of other ones so today i decided i'm not going to do that i will bring in the the, the valley boys but they're going to do some drumming type of thing you see what they're going to do with the drumming 
but the ones I want to bring is one family. I hardly play one family. So after this next video, I'm going to be showing you uh, one family. Then I can go to Genesis. It's Genesis actually who are doing the drumming. Then I can go to Genesis and show you about it. But otherwise, it's one family. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go because I keep saying rack and scrap, rack and scrap. Nobody seems to know what I'm talking about. So I'll show you rack and scrap. Then later on, I'll show you some people in the independent celebration playing rack and scrap there's a guy who's really i can't remember his name but he's really i mean he takes it like very very serious and everybody takes him serious so now madam you better keep quiet you better keep quiet the the yeah show more groups we are showing more groups don't worry about that so i'm going to show a bit of uh rack and scrap then i'll go into europe then I'll go into Africa, then I'll go to Trinidad, then I'll come back again to your thing. So COVID is still around. Thank you very much. So I'm going to show you how this girl is going to show you how to make your, whoa, your mask, right? And then we can go back to the other stuff because we still need to care for the, ourselves apart from caring for the environment. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where we are going to be making a zero waste face covering in under two minutes from just two simple pieces of equipment. A piece of fabric and some hair ties. I think this is a really important video from the perspective of making sure that medical grade masks are reserved for frontline workers and essential workers that really need them and also to ensure that we don't end up with a ton of masks being wasted and ending up in landfill in the environment which unfortunately we have seen tons of so the ability to use a piece of fabric and reuse it and wash it after each use is really important not only from a safety perspective but from an environmental perspective as well so I really hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope it will be really functional in your everyday life as we continue to fight this crisis together. The ideal material for your face covering would be cotton or linen and you can make your face covering from anything you have at home, whether it's a scarf or a t-shirt or a towel. I just happen to have plenty of fabric squares lying around so I'm going to use one of these which is about 17 inches by 22 inches. All I'm going to do first as my step one is to fold the two edges of the fabric together to meet in the middle. And I'm going to fold those a second time. So essentially we have made a double fold. So we have two layers of fabric lying over each other at the moment. Step three is then to fold your fabric into thirds. So you'll have three equal sections. This can be a little bit tricky because we're not using stitches. So just take your time and work with the material that you have. I'm then going to take one of my hair ties. I'm using the thin version because I find that the thicker the hair tie, the more annoying it is behind the ears. And I'm going to pass the hair tie over one of those curds to meet the first fold. This essentially acts as the elastic that you would have or the tie that you would have if you had a more high quality or expensive mask. So it's the part that goes behind your ear. And next, I'm simply just going to fold those two flaps in on each other. So we have another two layers of fabric protection. And the more that you work with this, the more you smooth it out, the more comfortable it will be to have around your nose and mouth. So as you can see there, I ended up with a nice flat piece of fabric where my nose and mouth will go. So there's nothing aggravating. And that is literally it. Pick your mask up carefully and check that it fits. What you want to make sure is that your mask covers your nose completely and your mouth completely. Also that it is tight to the sides of your face. It should also allow you to breathe without restriction. So make sure that it is tight, but not too tight. It is recommended that you wash your mask daily in a hot wash over 60 degrees with detergent. This is such a quick and functional and comfortable face covering to put together in the blink of an eye so that you can make sure that you are doing your part to protect the most vulnerable in our society. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Please don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of my zero waste videos. Stay safe out there and I will see you back on my channel again. Bye. Yes, we definitely need to stay safe. And I, I agree with um, uh, the, the goddess there that, you know, 
COVID is still around, really. So we need to take it easy and make your own one, and then that becomes stylish and very exciting. So look and see what Rack and Scruff is all about. <laughs> and I've been harassing this goddess for months and months and months to get some video that I want to do with Rake Scrub because the drumming and all that we've got a lot of that costumes we've got thousands of all that so there's a tradition that I want is to do with that what 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 are you saying what are you saying what 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 what, what? watermelon is spoiling on the vine <laughs> on the vine okay Watermelon is spoiling on the vine. You can tell I'm useless. I'm really useless. So you come back and let me know about that. So now we're going to move on. We're going to move on. We're going to get into the Genesis drumming. Uh, this is like really a movement. I don't know. I think you check it like a movement where it starts as one and then you keep on moving. It's very much like a flash mob, but it's not a flash mob, right? It's moving on and on and on and on.
That was Genesis for you, and Angelic is saying Genesis is the youngest uh, uh, Jangan group, a category Jangan group in the Bahamas. And Angelic, did you hear what, what um, Nadia is asking you? Are these all men playing? Yeah, where are the ladies? Where are the ladies? Come on, they're not supposed to be just dancers. Huh? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You say Jankani music, sweet hair, sweet, sweet. No, it's not. It's a gene- energetic, en- <laughs> energetic. That's the word I wanted to use. Right now, we are going to go into some scientific business. My brother can discuss that to you better than me. Some serious, because now we're going to go into the environment. Right, we're looking into the environment now. No, Angelic, you can't say yes because we didn't see them. Nadia just just actually analyzed the whole video. She stripped it apart and she couldn't find a single a single girl or a woman. She couldn't find anybody. What happened there? Anyway, we're going to go now because we still have to look and understand about the, the environment. So I'm going to take you into this thing that you need to understand, which is geomechanical view. Uh, don't ask me what that is because I don't know. And it's going to say it itself, right? High pressure rising, oceans, forests, biotic pump. What does that mean? What does that all mean? I could start, as you can see. Wow, we are going to go in deeper, deeper into geomechanical view. Just listen what they say about the environment. Just listen to this. If we want to thrive on this planet, we need to preserve and regenerate the forests. Did you hear that? If we have to survive, we need to sort out something with the forest. So, my biggest question is, do forests bring rain? And this is what this clip is all about. That's where you're going to get about all this geomechanical view, biotic palm, oceans, forest, and all that. So, without any further ado, let's go into it, deep down into it. All around the world, traditional wisdom has it that forests bring the rain. Scientists have scoffed at this notion for a while. Forests grow where there's ample precipitation, but they do not cause that precipitation. It comes because of winds that are governed by geomechanical processes which have nothing to do with where the forests are and aren't. Water does not tend to stay in one spot for very long. Most of it ends up running off into the ocean via rivers. Unless there's some way for the moisture from the ocean to come back inland, all of the land's water would be gone very quickly, as would the forest. According to the geomechanical view, moisture gets transferred inland when water vapor is carried from the ocean by winds. Because some of this water gets lost to precipitation, the deeper inland this air gets, the less moist it becomes. Therefore, deeper inland means less rainfall. If this view is true, we should expect to only see forests near the coasts and drier, more arid areas the farther inland we go. But this is not what we find. Where there are still natural forests, precipitation does not decrease with distance from the ocean. In fact, it often increases, the greatest amount of rainfall being in the deepest parts of the forest, sometimes thousands of miles from the coast. This is unexpected and difficult to explain with the geomechanical view. What on earth could be attracting so much water to a spot so far from the ocean? And why? While there is more water in the ocean than in forests, 
forested areas have more water vapor in the air. This is because forests, especially healthy ones, have a lot more surface area for water to evaporate off of. Multiple canopy layers, shrubs, moisture-laden ground are all full of water which transpires or evaporates entering the air. As a result, we find much more water vapor in the forest even when there is less total water. The ample amount of water vapor in the forest rises and condenses into clouds, changing from gas to liquid. This creates a drop in air pressure, which allows even more vapor-filled air to rise. This creates an upward air current, which in turn creates a horizontal current closer to the ground. This sucks in air from higher pressure areas, like the air from over the ocean. This air contains some water vapor, which increases the total amount of water in the forest, leading to more frequent rainfall. Essentially, forests create a giant constant air current that attracts moisture from hundreds of miles away. This is how we find so much water so far from the ocean. The forests bring it in. This process is known as the biotic pump, and it shows how traditional wisdom was right all along. Forests really do bring the rain. So as more forests are clear-cut, the more extreme become the droughts, and the more expansive become the deserts. If we want to thrive on this planet, we need to preserve and regenerate the forests. It's the most crucial thing we drop every week is the do about the environment and also Hackney because we are we are um, we are partners with Hackney. So because we are partners in Hackney, I'm going to play you one of the songs that we've got as a challenge. It's called Tamba Carnival, and it's a challenge for anybody to dance or sing along with it and then put it into the competition. There's a lot of prizes to be won. So uh, this is just an opportunity I'm going to give some of the people who watch Jankanyu after the Sundays. So we are bringing you Tamba Carnival. Then after that, I am going to take you to see um, Despacido, and then we can check one family of the Bahamas. So stay there and enjoy. So we're going now to Tamba, Tamba Carnival. And Make note of where you can do the training. Yo, this is your boy Scrappy alongside Pax. You know we come to give the people a really good time, right? So if you come to sing, if you come to dance, if you come to enjoy the carnival, I want to see you take part right now. Pax, let me go. One, two, three, go. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba Nati. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba Nati. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba Nati. Tamba Kalibo, Tamba.
Yeah, that was Tamba Carnival. And now we know, move on. Ah, we're supposed to go somewhere else, but we didn't go. What was that all about? I don't know. Anyway, so now we are going to move on to Zero Waste Travel Kit. How we can make your Zero Waste Travel Kit. And we really serious about this. Then we move on to, after this, we're going to go back to Jankanu dancing, competition, and all sorts of stuff like that. One of the things that I'm very excited about this giant cultural dance, which went on and on and on and on, and then went into the Guinness Book of Records. So I'll be showing that. But for now, let's move to the Zero Waste, right? But... <laughs> This is something that you can easily carry in your purse or your bag whenever you're stepping out of the house and this earth kit can help you say a no to single-use disposable products. So, this little bag is my earth kit. lovely day today and I want to go for a walk. I carry my own steel bottle filled with water from home so that I don't have to buy packaged drinking water when I'm <laughs> thirsty. The advantage of carrying a bottle from home is that I can refill it whenever needed. These reusable bamboo straws come in a cute canvas pack which have straws of various sizes and they even come with a small brush to help you wash them so that they are ready for the next time. I like to say a no to single-use disposable plates and spoons by carrying my own steel plate and spoon from home so that I don't create any unnecessary trash while enjoying my favorite food. I also refuse the tissue paper and instead carry my own cloth handkerchief from home which is reusable and washable. I like to keep a steel cup in my earth kit. Whenever I need a quick cup of chai, I like to take my drink in my own cup. This way, I get to say a no to single-use disposable cups made of paper or plastic. When you eat out at a restaurant and would like to take some parcel home, you're usually given your food parcel in an aluminium or a plastic food container. Both of which are bad for health and they also increase your trash. Instead, I like to carry my own steel container from home. I like to hand over this steel container to the waiter whenever I need to parcel my food. Sometimes when I'm bored to cook or would like to eat something nice, I like to send my husband with the same steel container, a bigger one of course, to parcel omelette pao. Omelette pao is a Goan delicacy. It's nothing but the gravy of chicken shakuti inside a Goan pao along with an egg omelette. It's really yummy and a must try whenever you are coming to Goa. Here's presenting my earth kit, a small step towards bringing about a big change. Hey! Hey! You're still watching the program! Keep watching! Don't look at me! Keep watching! Ha! Right, yo, yes, yeah. so you've got that here. Yeah. You can make your own zero waste uh, travel kit. So we've still got a few stuff going on. The the the, the and we're also going to go to one family. We're also going to do the Chester Giants. I think we did it before, but I don't think we've actually finished it. So we're going to show that we've done the zero waste thing, and we are also going to look into the Parks Tree uh, art, which people have asked me to replay. And then we're going to go to the Independence. Then we're also going to do a look at the Giant 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 cultural dance which we are going to look at right right now the
some people showing some interest in this so i would send you some more information and maybe bring it next week right Yeah, this particular dance, I mean, as I say, I'll give some more information next week, but it ended up on the Guinness Book of Records for having the most community in one place. That's why it's called the Giant uh, Cultural Dance. Yeah. Uh, Liz, you don't need to apologize, my dear. Uh, most people don't manage to watch this on Sunday, but they watch it another time. That's why it always looks like nobody's watching, but... By the time we finish the week, a lot of people have watched this. But we also respect that you are one of our regular live uh, things. So next time, I'm going to call you at uh, 12 o'clock. And then I'll call you at 1 o'clock. Then I'll call you at half past 1. Then I'll call you at half past 2. I'll call you at half past 3. Then I'll call you 10 minutes to 4 to say, now we are getting there. Cheryl, where were you? We just caught the last end of this. Where were you? Now, 
Uh, most of you have heard this thing about 3D printing. So let's check this out. One of the biggest challenges in trying to make a garment using a 3D printer is that 3D printers print rigid, hard plastic. This project actually started with an idea to create a bracelet that was made out of hinged components that could print flat and then fold into a three-dimensional configuration. And we thought it would be amazing to make something larger scale like a dress. We take something large and three-dimensional and fold and flatten it using simulation to make it small enough to print in one piece. So the entire idea of this hinges on when we take it out of the machine, it can unfold into a dress. Part of the idea of this entire project is being able to make complex, large-scale things with no assembly required. So we were experimenting with creating hinged textiles, which in a way are sort of like chain mail. They have a hardness to them. They're made of a hard material, but they're interlinked in such a way where they can move and you can run in them, you can sit down in them. They're not a hard plastic cage around your body. It's a lot of garments that have been printed in the past that were giant sculptures were printed in tiny, itty bitty little pieces and then hand assembled, which is really doesn't even necessitate being 3D printed. That's how you would make a traditional garment or, or sculpture. How can we adapt simulations that biologists are using to understand how form and pattern emerge in nature? And at Nervous System, those are the sort of experiments that we've been doing. And this dress is sort of our latest project of combining engineering and science techniques with uh, design and digital fabrication. Uh, so now we are going to move. We're not going to stop. We're going to move. Now we're going to go to the one family, which I keep mentioning is going to happen. And I that's inspiring for most of you. I know that. And then we're going to move to the Chester Giants. And then after that, we're going to go to Independence. And then we're going to go to Junk Funk Fashion. Junk Funk Fashion. That's what I should be doing now, really. Junk Funk Fashion. All it is is people get together. They got a competition called Junk Funk Fashion. And they play some funky music. And everybody wears nothing but just like really oh the thing hey my brother's just joined us i think let's see what are you saying my brethren um uh, amaya good evening to all janganu crew and viewers just finished work welcome me brethren welcome 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 you just mean something that i thought you'd find interesting which was the giant cultural dance but you can see the program at your own time anyway so now we're going to take you to some place where it shows you that you can do amazing, amazing work with cardboard, with cardboard, without any big floats or anything like that. Now, this is all cardboard floats and everything. So this was Janka Nu 2018. <laughs>
Wow, I love it. I love it. They go all the way and the music is just something that fi <laughs> I find very interesting because you go from uh, London, London is burning, whatever that song is, and then to, you know, uh, wheels of a bus go round and round, round and, and then it goes to, oh, McDonald, yeah, I love that. I love that. And then uh, I think Donna says, because Donna went there with a whole group of people from east midland so she's saying her daughter is watching and she remembers she remembers going from midnight to midnight and annual says jankanu takes us through the world tour you can see the world in one and only jankanu you're right we're taking like so far we've been where have we been we've been everywhere we've been to india we've been to papua new guinea uh host of plenties oxford uh, yes, Anwar, you miss one of your bands in Oxford, uh, Horns of Plenty. Now, we're going to move to the steel pan and then we come back to the independence in the Bahamas where you can see this rack and scrap I want you to see. But for now, let's go and see Nostalgia Steel Band uh, in Notting Hill.
Yeah, I, I need to explain something there which was quite funny at the time. Uh, this gentleman, a friend of mine here, he's always plays this crap thing with uh, nostalgia. But when they do the whole round in Notting Hill, it's too long for him. So he comes to the judging point and he waits there until they come. So we were chatting and he didn't realize that it was actual them. When he found out it's them, that's the panic he is seeing there. Just check it again. But once he's holding that scrap, he's the most happy man you will see. He's so happy. He's always very happy doing this. That was Notting Hill Carnival for you there, and um, uh, hold on, I'm, I want to go on the beach today. I haven't been on the beach for years and years and years. Now I'm happy I'm on the beach, but having said that, for most of you who know where I come from, we don't have a beach. i never seen a beach until I came to England, until I was about 30-something. Zimbabwe is only rivers, and of course Victoria Falls and lakes. Cariba Dam and things like that. But we don't have the sea. So when I found the sea, I started going there all the time. So you see, one of those things that I enjoy when I'm in places like Brazil and Ghana. What are you saying, Angelic? In the rain. It's not raining. I also, actually, Angelic, I just remembered that uh, there's something you said, and then I just realized that you were talking about the name of a song, and I was talking about something else. So I did get that. So whatever it was, don't worry, I got it. Amaya, right. uh, what are you saying? Bless this lovely gentleman, enjoying a lot. <laughs> hey, watch it, boy. Watch it, watch it. Now we are going to go to the Park Street at, and then from there we are going to go and see Desperado and the Independence in Bahamas. We're going to squash all that into the next half hour, which is what's left right now, right? What are you saying, madam? I remember the commandos when the commandos were in Liverpool and the rain came down. Everyone ran with speed to the nearest cover. You know what? That's funny because when I went to to Brazil for the first time, we were watching a band, right? And the rain came. I ran. I ran to take cover. Then when I look back, everyone was still there watching the band. In Zimbabwe, when it starts raining, it's rain right then you could go for two days three days four days five days six days weeks whatever but when i was in brazil i was surprised because everybody knows that the rain will just come poor 
and then boom stop again so when i was running to hide you know away from the rain by the time i got to my shelter the rain had stopped and people still watching so they know the runnings i didn't know the runnings at all so it's quite interesting what are you saying the real beach are in the bahamas I know nothing about beaches, so I'm not going to argue with you that one. They will just could say, you are right. You are right, uh, uh, Jankanu princess. Don't say what it's supposed to be, because that would be five pounds, okay? And Jankanu is a show, but don't say what it is, because if you did, Nadia is counting. From Boxing Day, you'll be saying all these things and we're adding up. I don't know where you're going to get the money from. You're going to have to rob a bank, really, because it's five pounds every time you make that. So now, where are we going? We're going to check up this Park Street thing because uh somebody was asking me i'm mean, actually two people ask me about the parks tree art and uh so i'm going to show that to you again and then it's all just natural natural look at that you see this is the inside of it when you get a drum this is where it comes from yeah look at this how wonderful is that? Who could ever create anything like this? Eh? You tell me. I don't know anybody who come up with this. You could come up with some plastic rubbish, whatever. But this is it. Nature, that's my best. That's the best too. Do, do, do. Huh? Nature, it is best. Hi, ya, 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 yo, yo. Having spent hours in the bush, in the jungle, looking at trees, taking photos and so on. And uh, this is what I ended up with. So I'm sure I can recognize that tree. I was talking about that tree earlier. And then what else would we do? I made this as well. Yeah. Just like all these trees. I think I was standing there earlier, talking a lot of this and that and so on on it. And then I also made, out of the same trees, I made that. A bit scary, isn't it? Huh. And then I made that. I think that's the tree that I made some music out. I think I played something there. So I made that with the same pieces of pictures. I also made this, which is just slightly the opposite of that. That. See, the wood is well now polished. The wood is polished. Yeah, you don't need to sandpaper or anything. And then I made that another sort of like spooky, spookyish. You know, I can see sort of skull, eyes, smile, and things like that on it. Then I also made this one. Yeah, so this is more like wallpaper type of thing with the same uh, trees and then I made that one I made that one which looks like it's a man standing up big big telly telly bear teddy bear <laughs> teddy bear yeah look at that look at that so there is art in the jungle you just need to find it and also just need to be creative with it which is what we're encouraging you to do here at Jankanu. so enjoy the rest of the program and i hope you learned something there yes there you have it you have it oh uh, i don't want being on the i don't like being on the beach really i like being in the jungle so uh, uh somebody's gonna have to change that i don't want to be there at all or give me something different okay so francisco where have you been hold a cheek huh did you see because there's some stuff i just shown here which i know i know i know i know you were going to make comments but you were not there and i was so happy that we we're not there because your comments would have been out of this world right i made some music out of a tap dripping tap and i know you're going to come up with some something whatever so now we're going to go to the independence in uh, uh i'm breaking my rules aren't i we're going to go into the independence uh performance in 
in the Bahamas. Francisco, I'm going to annoy you. After this, I'm going to play the Chester Giants. Yeah, the Chester Giants again. So be ready there, okay? But right for now, let's just show you this. Uh, it's a stage thing, so I'm going to speed it up. But it's a stage thing in the Bahamas. And watch the rack and scrap guy with his saw. That's what you need to watch. Just watch that. Hey, did you see the rock and scrap? Did you see the rock and scrap? Yeah, Angela. Yes, Angela. Exactly. Exactly. Don't worry. We are going to show this. You know, he's worried about it. I'm going to show it anyway. But anyway, did you see my man with the with the rock and scrap? The saw man. Oh, where is he gone? There you go. Uh, just keep an eye on him, right? After I've shown you about the rock and scrap.
So, madam, say that this contemporary rack and scrap, right? Okay, okay, if you say so, I will believe you indeed. So, um, Francisco, you say you don't want me to show this, don't do it. Angela was there, Angela Claire Bush was there, right? And she saw the whole thing. So what's your problem? What's your problem? You can't say to me, don't do it. You know me, when you say don't do it, then I'm going to do it, right? So now we're going to show you the Chester Giants. And my brother is going to introduce me, not me, Francisco. So you even got more worries there, okay? So this is the Giants in Chester. Aha, aha, aha. Now I'm going to talk about the vault. The vault is where you keep old material, right? And we take off these old videos and then we show you. Because when we filmed at the time, we just thought, oh, nobody's going to watch them. But now we're finding a lot of people watching some of the programs that we filmed. And I thought, oh, nobody's going to ever watch it. Now, a few years ago, I got invited by a lady called Christine in Chester. And then she said she wanted to find out how we could do a conference on giants. Now, I didn't know that practice happened in England. But when I met her, then I realized there's quite a lot of giants that happen throughout England. So what it is, is we managed to do the conference. We did a conference of giants and people like uh, uh, Angela were there. And, and Francisco, of course, Francisco ended up directing the, the event that I'm just about to show you now. So they did the giant procession. So within the giant procession, uh, Francisco and Freddie managed that. They were very responsible for that. So uh, at last, my brother was doing some work there. Uh, anyway, what happened now is that I had to put in my own my own characters because most people think i don't make masks well i made three characters one was mugabe one was bob mali because he came and sang in zimbabwe and ambiane and ambiane and as an elderly from zimbabwe who was one of the first female to fight the colonial system and then the the british uh, managed to kill her together with uh, sekuru kagui who were the militant people right so i decided to make a statement with these three characters and uh, I'm not going to tell you what happened because I ended up in some serious trouble. But all I can do is show you two of those characters. The Bob Marley one and the Mugabe one. Now what happened here is that when we did this, there was not enough time to start putting legs and hands and all that. But I had the head. The head, I had different people help me with this. The head, Jessica, Jessica, who was at the time from Festival Roads, she managed to help me make up the heads. And then I had Christina helping me with the stuff from inside. Then I had somebody, another artist in Luton, who helped me put the guitar on Bob Marley. So we were in business. So what you're going to see there is just a little clip about where you can see this giant and with me in the rain trying. <laughs> right, Francisco, what's your problem now? Now, you can't tell me to start showing the One World uh, Festival in Liverpool. Actually, One World Festival, Nadia edited that for me a few weeks ago. I can't remember why I didn't show it. No, I, I remember why I didn't show it. There were quite a lot of shots of um, Richard doing his football thing, more than the performance. Maybe because I filmed more of that, I don't know. Then he had some old... Uh, traditional people on stage doing some stuff. I'll try to trim it down. It's quite interesting, actually. You have some very interesting uh, traditional folks from Chile and Colombia and all sort of places like that. So, yes, yeah, I would, yes, okay. You're forcing me to do something I didn't want to do, you know. Everyone, tell your friends, like, and subscribe so we can have more. Yeah, yes, yes, listen to Nadia. And, Amwa, sorry, Amwa, you said something at the beginning. Lots of great talents, artists we get to see and learn from this great Jankanyu show. 
And then after that, you just say something. Jankan shows all races from different backgrounds. Nobody's uh, left out to me. It's all about world's unity. You got it completely right there, my friend. You know, everybody, all styles, all styles of music, all styles. As long as they don't damage, if they damage the environment, I don't want to know. So why did you film football? Yeah, because I, why, why, Francisco, you can't ask me that. I'm Richard's agent. So I was more interested with my client because you only paid me to be a, an MC, not a filmmaker. Remember, I was the MC, not a filmmaker. So it was your responsibility to get a filmmaker to do stuff, not to get stuff from the MC. Come on. You know? So I had my client there, Richard, whom I represent as an agent. So I did do a lot of that. You are not my client, right? You and your brother are not my client. So I only did a little clip of you going, bang, get back, bring, 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 whatever. Anyway, we are moving. We're not going to stop. So I'm going to go to a bit of entertainment in Trinidad, which is, which is, what did you say? What did you say? I have the film. So why did you film football? You have the film. You have the film. So why haven't I got that? You know, I was an MC. MC. I didn't film myself. So this film, when you bring it to me, I'm not looking at anything at all. I'm just looking at myself as an MC, right? Anything else, that's your own business. But I want that film. But you know, I want it for me, not for anything else. So let's go and have some bit of entertainment with these girls. Yeah? Uh, Alicia Jagasa. Playing it's song Despacito. Night longer the atmosphere filled with love and laughter, joy and care. Here's what. Look, we getting ready to wait up to Lopino. The traffic party cool up and we ready for the show. Going early to want to miss Los Alumnos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we getting ready to wait up to Paramin. We're five in the morning, we sell Paramin. If all you love your Param, let me see you do so. All the Param lovers. If you love Trinidad and Tobago, let me see you all do so. Yeah, yeah. If all you love the Caribbean, Cari Festa, let me see all the hands. Aha! Despacito It's just Christmas time right here, it's Twitch and Bago We're getting ready for the birth of Jesu Christo The Queen Lane and the shopping everywhere, it's the love flow Despacito Christmas time right here, it's Twitch and Bago Around out the house, we don't have to know ya We eat and I'll be drinking everything you bring here Sing it, Glory, sing it! I never wanna spend a Christmas time from me, it's my bella That is gonna drive me loca Look, everyone has sing a song, 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 sing a Everybody comes in on the loop, no this and one Mash up every party when you see we touch down Batito, batito, suave, suave, tito We head in Nocturne, Santo, Tabaquita, Rio Claro All the baranderos, all the barang lovers Hey, no go Santo, celebrate the nothing Batito, batito, suave, suave, tito We head in Nocturne, Santo, Tabaquita, Rio Claro All the baranderos, all the barang lovers Hey, no go Santo, celebrate the nothing just Christmas time right here in Sweet Trin Vago We're getting ready for the birth of Jesu Christo Kicking and all the shopping everywhere, it's the love flow Despacito, this is how we do it here in Sweet Trin Vago Parang also house, house, we don't have to know ya We eat and I'll be drinking everything you bring here yeah. Sing it, Lori, sing it I never wanna spend a Christmas away from me, it's La Vega oh, oh, I just wanna drive me loca oh, oh, Aquí es mi favorito Favorito, favorito, baby Sorry, honey, ginger beer Look everyone has sing a song, sing a song to the song. Christmas music in the air, it comes around once a year. People jumping up and singing along to the Baran. Los Alonis beats we singing this pasito. We come out here to sing and some play music and day. Party, 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 singing some movie. Party, everybody comes in Los Alonis dance and one. Mash up every party when you see we touch down. Pasito, pasito, come on, come on. We head and knock to San Lucas, back to Rio Grande. Holy Baranderos, holy Baran lovers. Let's go, San Lucas, celebrate the nascimento. Pasito, pasito, come on, come on. We have the most alumni. Thank you very much for being such a wonderful. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Despacito.
Wow! I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the Kari Festa, yes, most of the people in the Caribbean will take part into that festival. Uh, we're nearly finishing our day and uh, 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 Shell, Shell, I'm going to find another name for you, maybe a Shona name, right? Because this Cheryl thing is, is, tra is, it drives me mad. You don't mind me calling whatever, but for other people, I look like an idiot. Like, I don't know how to say my friend's name. So, we're going to have to agree on this. You're going to have to have a Shona name, right? Cheryl, 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 whatever. Now, Cheryl sent me, she's doing some research for Jankanu. She sent me a very interesting link. This is a lady, I can't remember her name, I think she's Russian. She makes all her wigs using cardboard and paper. And I was going to show it this week, but then you see this thing of the way we interact nowadays, social media. I looked on WhatsApp, I didn't find it. Then I said, oh, I think she sent it me on Messenger. So I looked on Messenger, I didn't find it. Then I said, oh, maybe she sent me when I was speaking with her on LinkedIn. I looked on LinkedIn, I didn't find it. Then I said, oh, maybe it was Twitter. I looked on Twitter, I didn't find it. Then I look on my email. It's, it's, why can't we just have one way of communicating? Now I can't find anything. Because it's one of the things gets sent on Facebook, one of the things gets sent here and there and so on. Ah, Maya, after a long, tiring day at work, but I'm back full of Jankanu energy. My phone is on full volume, enjoying the music. Yes, that's how it should be, my friend, Amaya. Ah, and uh, yes, I think we agree that we should have that chat about the project of yours, which is the flags. This guy he made some very interesting project that is really very good for everybody, anybody from each nation, any nation. He made a flag and it's got all this hello, you know, and different countries, different languages and so on. So we shall bring him on to the show. Very interesting artist and, and very good supporter of Jankanu. Now, so we're going to go to the junk funk fashion, junk funk fashion, junk funk fashion, and see what that's all about. You can make your costumes. We're just using plastic hair plastic bra plastic head plastic glasses plastic pants everything plastic and that is what we call junk funk so i'm just hoping the music that's on there does not put me into trouble actually i might change the music because that sounds to me like steve wanda and i could get into trouble with that one there right so we're going to play something else let them do their thing and we play something so where is the music? Oh, the usual, any any one of those, JJ. into couture fashion. That's that? right, yeah. Wait, I mean, I'm wearing an example from the 2007 show. Gorgeous, and I'm wearing a jacket that was worn by Mayor Sam Adams last year, but I took it from out of his wardrobe. He has no idea. <laughs> but now, Sherry, you uh, we drew straws. You got the short ones, so you're out here oh, in the sure. cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm going upstairs where it's a little warmer to the green carpet, so have fun. All right, I'll catch you later. that would be able to house an incredible event like this more than Portland. I know it's a great city. I don't know why this is the perfect... Sherry just left. Where did... It's the only city in North America that we've reduced our greenhouse gas emissions um, based on 1990 levels. Uh, we have the highest recycling rate of any city uh, in the nation. And, you know, that's only scratching the surface. We still have so much more potential to be a truly green city, so... That's why this is just such a perfect place to have a junk to funk trash and show like this. There you go. I love it. We're getting answers here on Sustainable Today. Uh, I know you have to run. You know, Mayor, it's not polite to leave a lady waiting. And the lady waiting upstairs is your co-host, Melanie Skinner. I'm in the middle of broadcasting. I'm in the middle of doing the All right. I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you. All right. You're joining us. Well, let's not forget to thank the lady huh? who's really responsible for this event. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. From yeah, we'll, yeah. events, okay. who's been doing this event year after year, it just gets big. I'm excited. This is my first time at Junk to Funk, and I'm ready to get funky. All right. Now, um, 
you are, among other things, the managing editor for the Mercury and the fashion editor. So, uh, and tonight we've got this great band. So, do you have a DJ name we should go by? I was kind of thinking of DJ Fashion Fancy Pants. DJ Fashion Fancy Pants, and you can just call. Time and date will be posted on my website. <laughs> Next we have Kristen Calhoun from the Regional Arts and Culture Council. They work to integrate arts and culture into every aspect of community life. Kristen's early trash and inspiration came from Oscar the Grouch, and they still keep in touch. Also welcome brilliant Portland fashion designer, Adam Arnold, who also makes... Adam also makes his own brand of moonshine. After the show, Adam will be selling his moonshine out of a rusty Ford Aerostar van in the alley next to the theater. Please remember to bring your own jug, and you better look fabulous, or he will not give you any. Our fourth jury panel doer, the education chair on the board of directors of the Association of Oregon Recyclers. That's right. Rhonda is also Washington County's first sustainability coordinator and the county's first certified street fighter. Watch out. So if you live in Beaverton and you don't turn in your old cell phone, CDs, or used batteries, Rhonda's gonna come knocking at your door. Activity, craftsmanship, and wow factor. That's right, so let's get this party started. Let me introduce the Junk to Funk House band playing trash in, bringing out the first set entitled PDC Crunk Junk. Hit it. for the urban ninja on the go like you. Apply a few karate chops to some used shoe bags, a tarp, a tin pole, and you get one brave man, Brian Levitt, with his creation, the Trashin' Assassin. Yeah, just to say everything made there, they are wearing, even the presenters, it's all made of recycled material and cardboard. Unless it's Brady Lang's creation, worn by Sky Johnson, it's Bedtime Bride. Do you have any comments from the first set? <laughs> uh, is this thing on? Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, well, I didn't have any time to confer with any of my fellow judges, but um, I, uh, just off the top of my head, thought that the bride was rather nice. It reminded me of getting dressed up when you're a kid, getting all of your <laughs> old blankets and things like that. and. Um, what is it? What does everyone else think? 20% of the material, that's 20% of the material that goes into our, our landfill is made up exclusively of pa packaging. It's the stuff stuff. It's not even the stuff. It's the stuff that comes and wraps the stuff. So, a lot of it isn't recyclable at curbside. During the holidays, the increase in our packaging trash is phenomenal, Marjorie. Well, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? Dog! What on earth was that? Okay, so I'm going to continue this next week, seeing that we don't have enough time to finish that. I also got the Trinidad uh, Carnival, which I said I was going to finish this week. We didn't manage to do that. So we're going to have to finish that next week. And also, I promised that there's going to be some yoga 
the last two weeks I've been saying yoga yoga and I haven't managed to because we ran out of space. So I'm going to finish this whole thing with the yogi yoga. Yogi yoga. So get ready, get your yoga mats ready uh, so that you can chill out and do the yoga. And uh, I would like to thank everybody. And uh, what's uh, Amaya just said something here which I haven't read. I know every junker new crew from behind the scenes, camera crew, everyone puts in hard work and effort to bring this junker new show to all of us. Thank you again, everyone, the hard work. So you can hear that crew, you can hear that crew, right? Uh, and Liz, thanks you very much for your usual support. And we'll see you next week. You try to remember. No, I told you, you don't have to remember. I'll be calling you. I start from 12 o'clock, then half past 12. You have to make note of these times, right? 12 o'clock, half 12, then I go 1 o'clock, then I go half past 1, then I go half 2. I leave you an hour because I've given you enough warning, like half 2. Then I come again at 3 o'clock, then I come at half past 3. Then you are there, okay? Uh, thank you very much, comrade um, Francisco. We still need to meet and sort out this other stuff that we need to do, right? And... Uh, Send me the other one because I think, you know, the film that you are going to send, you have to know that I'm not interested in it in terms of what we did. I'm interested in terms of how I presented because I don't see myself. I was filming other people and so on. So thank you very much for that. And Liz, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, next week, we are not going to be broadcasting it on Sunday. Okay. We are going to miss this connecting Sunday, but we are going to play a repeat of this program here. We play it next Sunday, right? So in practice, if you come here at 4 o'clock, there will be something, but I won't be presenting it as in responding the way you are. And for me personally, this what makes this program for me is when we are interacting with each other, really. It doesn't matter if I'm interacting with two people. It just gives me that energy of doing the program. And then when other people watch it a week or two or three months or a year later, they reckon, wow, that's a good program. But what it is, it what makes it is the people who are here live, right? So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I'll leave with some yoga. Have a beautiful weekend. And then we'll see you again after next week. But next week, I'll just be playing... Uh, a thing and ma and thank you very much manja ma, ma, um, <laughs> madam angela claire bush for being with us you've been always been one of our biggest supporters so everybody was here today donna fox liz dees uh, amaya uh, francisco uh who else nadia who's working with me now and george who's working with me now and helen helen what happened to you and madam cheryl who still needs a zimbabwe name right cheryl you're going to get a zimbabwe name and i know your mother's going to come and shoot me for doing that because i can say cheryl 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 you see what i mean you can see i'm struggling anyway have some yoga are you ready for the yoga then you all ready right shh shh take it easy Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Yogi Yoga. My name is Muhammad Ali and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves that I do and enjoy the adventure. We always start by sitting our bottom, crossing our legs and taking both our hands onto our heart and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Bismillah. We always start with Bismillah with any action that we do by remembering Allah. So on three, one, two, Three, Bismillah. Can anyone guess where we are today? How about we look through our binoculars? We make our hands into crab claws, place them on our face, and look around. Wow, I think you guessed it by now. That's right, we're in the Amazon rainforest, the biggest rainforest in the world. Before we start exploring, let's warm up our bodies and loosen up our muscles. So, let's start with our right shoulder. We lift it up and back down and up again, and down. And with our left shoulder, up, down, up, and down. Do you think we can make small circles with our shoulders? Let's start going backwards with our right shoulder. One circle, and two. And with our left shoulder, rolling it back, and another circle. Now, let's do the same thing, but going forwards with our right shoulder. Make one little circle, 
and a second circle. And with our left shoulder, one and two. Now let's shake them up and down. All right, now that our shoulders are warmed up, let's do the same thing with our necks. We start by looking over our right shoulder. Gaze deep into the forest. And then our left shoulder. Look into the woods and try to spot all the different kinds of animals. Now, we look down at the forest floor. Look right between your legs and make sure you're stretching your neck. Now, we look up into the sky. By night, we see stars and by day, we see clouds. Now, let's get started and let's start our adventure. So we start our adventure by tiptoeing through the Amazon rainforest. We don't want to wake up those animals and disturb those little insects and every time we step onto the leaves it makes a little bustling noise and that's what we want to avoid so we don't disturb them and we want to avoid the big logs take big tiptoes over the log and over again and walk deep deep into the woods and on our way we see tall trees let's together make a really tall tree what we do we stand on both our feet raise one of your legs Lean against the other and put your arms above your head as tall as you can and breathe in. Breathe out. And again, breathe in and breathe out. Let's do the same thing with the opposite leg. Raise your leg, lean it against the other leg, make sure it's firm on the ground. Raise your hands above your head and breathe in. This time, we're gonna go as tall as we can. So, as far as you can reach, breathe in and breathe out and relax. Now, tall trees aren't the only things you find in the Amazonian forest. You also find small shrugs or bushes. So let's make a little bush. So we sit on our knees and cuddle ourselves up, down, put your body against your knees and huddle. Now, we're gonna breathe in and breathe out. And one more time, breathe in and breathe out. Now, on the trees you notice one of my favorite animals, or the prettiest ones in the Amazon rainforest, all the different kinds of parrots. My favorite one is a red parrot. Hello, little butterfly. So let's make a red parrot. Parrots sit on trees, bending their legs just like this. Now we pretend to be a parrot with our wings and every time we inhale we're going to lift our wings up and exhale we're going to lift them down. So let's do it together. Like a little parrot. Did you know that the fastest animal in the Amazon rainforest is the cheetah and it goes up to 70 miles an hour. So now let's go into our cheetah position. We start off in a, almost like a push-up position. Lay our palms on the floor using our tiptoes and then take one leg and lift it above the ground. If you find it difficult, you can rest on the ground. And here, we go breathe in and breathe out. If you want to make it more difficult, just like a cheetah, back to pounds, breathe in, breathe out. Let's do the same thing with our other leg. On our tiptoes, lift it up, and I want you to make your cheetah noise. All right, breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in one more time, and breathe out. I would love to be able to run as fast as a cheetah. Another really cool animal that we find in the Amazon rainforest are snakes, and they come in all sorts of different colors and shapes and sizes. Sometimes they're even poisonous. Shall we go into our snake position? We lie down on our stomachs, like so, and then point our tiptoes outwards and lift our bodies up. Stretch your back and use your elbows, or if you can do it even further, try to stretch your back even more and keep your arms straight. And look straight, breathe in and breathe out just like a snake, a slithering snake. Breathe in, inhale into your chest and exhale. Let's do it a third time. 
Now, as we move closer towards the water, we find big scary rhinos. Now rhinos, they look quite lazy, but in reality, they're really, really strong. Shall we make a rhino pose? Rhinos have a big horn, so what we're gonna do for that, we're gonna start off on our fours, lift one of our legs, kick it back, and take the opposing arm and lift it forward and balance. Now, as a rhino, let's breathe in and breathe out. Now, I want you to make your mean rhino face. Grrr. Breathe in and breathe out. Now, let's do the same thing with opposing arms and legs. Bring them back in, lift your leg up, kick it back, and lift the other arm up, balance, and now like a rhino, breathe in, breathe out. With that mean face, breathe in and breathe out. And bring your arms back into your body. And lastly, once we reach the water, we find the scariest alligators. Alligators, just like the rhinos, they look really lazy, but they're deadly. Let's go into alligator position by lying down once again on our stomachs. On our stomachs, your arms straight, lift your head up a little bit and breathe in and breathe out. Once again, breathe in, breathe out. This may not look so scary, but I think alligators are. Last but not least, we're gonna meditate. Let's go back and sit on our bottoms, crossing our feet and think about the blessings of Allah. So today's word of the day is al muqit It means the nourisher. Think about the Amazon rainforest. Close your eyes and imagine that you're in the real rainforest. And think about how Allah has nourished us and the animals, the way the ecosystem operates, how different animals interact with each other and survive of the nature. And think about how the Amazon rainforest is a source of food for us by providing us with oxygen and amazing, beautiful trees and forests. So next time, when you want to think about the blessings that Allah has nourished us with, say, I'm See you next time, inshallah.